Today we're looking at two lovely little all manual cameras from the days of film. These were professional slash semi-professional cameras and they both represent pretty much the pinnacle of all manual camera design. They're both beautifully made. The quality of the engineering on both these cameras is absolutely top notch. Both take batteries but only to power the built-in light meters. They will both operate without batteries and will still give you the full range of shutter speeds and apertures. Shutter speeds on both these cameras run from one second to one thousandth of a second and B. The Olympus is slightly smaller than the Nikon. They weigh more or less the same. They are all metal. Very, very tough construction. When it comes to engineering, the Nikon probably has a slight edge. There's no automation on either of these cameras. And as somebody once said, what you don't fit, don't go wrong. Both of these cameras, if looked after, will go on and on and on. Both of them are wonderful little machines. They're a delight to hold, they're a delight to use. And if you're thinking of doing some manual film photography, and I do recommend manual as the best way to learn, these two are hard to beat. The control layout of the Nikon is very simple. To switch the camera on, just pull out the rewind lever until it clicks. So the meter is now live. We can wind on, a nice short throw, and a very smooth, soft and supple action. Shutter speeds are changed on this dial. And the shutter release is in the usual place. This camera has a trick up its sleeve. It can do double exposures. Push this little button here, wind on, and that disengages the transport mechanism, leaving the film in the same place. Film rewind is easy. Flip up the little crank and turn. There's a hot shoe on top. Focusing is silky smooth and very light. And on this lens, it runs from 0.6 of a meter all the way up to infinity. The aperture ring is here next to the camera body. And on this lens runs from f1.8 to f16. To open the camera, move this little lever and pull up on the rewind control. This camera has a metal focal plane vertical travel shutter. The depth of field preview lever is here. And the self timer is here. And there is a film counter that resets automatically here. This is just about the only bit of automation on this camera. To set the film speed, pull upwards on the speed selector and turn. The top plate of the OM-1 is similarly clean, clear and uncluttered. Switch on to activate the meter. The wind-on is a slightly longer throw than the Nikon and not quite as smooth. Film speed is set by pushing this little button and turning the dial. 
film rewind is similar to the Nikon. Shutter speed is set by turning the rearmost ring on the lens. Very different to the Nikon and most other SLRs. To open the camera, pull up on the rewind crank. The OM-1 has a horizontal travel cloth shutter, similar to the Leica. Focusing is smooth, not quite as smooth as the Nikon, but the grip is a lot better and easier to find with the camera to your eye. The self-timer's in the same place. And it's operated by the small lever here. Here's a top view of the lens, the apertures at the front, and you can just see the shutter speed ring at the back of the lens. And I find this lens rather easier to control than the Nikon. The frame counter is here, it resets automatically, and again, this is the only bit of automation you will find on this camera. Two absolutely beautiful all manual film SLRs. Which is best? I can't say. I love them both. Both can be had for 120 to 150 pounds with a lens. Get one, try one, shoot some film. You won't be disappointed with either one. As always, thanks for watching. And please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. See you next time for more Xenography.